Hi guys and welcome back to Grace Engine Developments and uh, this week we've had quite an interesting job come in so I thought I would just give you a, a quick glimpse of how it's turned up and I'll talk through the process of how I'm going to repair it and then show the well, hopeful repair. So it's an old side valve Ford cylinder head. I'm pretty sure he said it was off a Model T. But I don't know if you can, well, I don't think you can miss it really, but it's got a crack from around here somewhere all the way along right down to here. Now, to repair that, I'm going to use um, a method called metal stitching. Now, when I worked at a company called Midland Energy Services in Shepshed, um, one of the guys that worked there, uh, his name was uh, Brian, and he was a... Uh, metal stitching expert um so i did a few jobs with him um I, I, i'm no expert on this subject i know the basics i kind of know what to do i've got the equipment to do it i've repaired a few cylinder heads this way uh this one's probably the biggest crack that i've ever had to do um but yeah we're gonna have a go so the first job that i'm gonna do is stick it through the shot blaster for a bit get the metal looking um get all the old paint and carbon and all oil off it, get the metal looking half decent, <laughs> and then I'll discuss how I'm gonna repair it. So, I've shot blasted the Model T cylinder head to reveal more of the crack and get rid of the old paint and stuff. If I grab a Sharpie, what I'll do is, I'll mark where I can see the end of the crack which is there and I can see I can see a crack right up to there but what I'm going to do is just show you two ways that I've got of um, crack developing or developing out a crack um, the first one is this iron tight kit which is a pretty good bit of kit so I'm going to use that and then the second part is what's in here. And that also involves using a horseshoe magnet, which I've got a horseshoe magnet in my toolbox somewhere. Just here. So what I'm gonna do is I'll start to, in fact, go and get the GoPro stand and I'll uh, go through the process. So step one is to spray it with this penetrant, which is like a, it's like a red dye, basically. Um, so this is all nice and clean and it's all prepped. And then we'll gently go over where we think the crack is with this red dye like that and we've got to leave that on for five minutes so that can basically bite into the uh into the crack so the um the tracer is now, sorry, I'm just moving the camera. So the tracer is now all dry. I've cleaned off the area. And now what we have to do is spray the developer on. So now I've shook it all up. And what we want to do is give it two to three light coats. That's better than a big heavy coat. So here goes for the first coat. Keep the can shaking up. Should come out quite nice and white. So that's the second coat. What I'm going to do now is let that dry and then just give it a third and final coat. 
So as you can see, all the way along here is the crack. So my two marks are just about bang on there. But what I'm gonna do is use this horseshoe magnet to see if we can encourage the crack to show itself any further. So all we do with this is put the, the horseshoe magnet on there and then uh, you can just follow it. Yeah, I mean straight away that has brought it down further. So if I, so my mark is here and then straight away the actual crack when we use this horseshoe magnet you can actually see the the iron filings moving on the cast iron but it goes right back now to here and then basically we can move it up further let me try and do it on this end and zoom in a bit better where you can see it so yeah it's come that one's actually going no further than the mark that I've made I don't know if you can see that the poles of the magnet are making the iron filings that are in this solution go in the crack in fact it is showing up another little crack yeah it is So it's come through now to to here. Though so I marked it there. So I'm just gonna have a little look around. And that's it. So we now know where it starts and where it stops. So the next thing on this is to repair the crack. I've marked my start and I've marked my finish and then I've put tiny little dots all the way along where I'm going to be repairing it. Now the first thing that I need to do is basically these are called locks. I need to fit these locks in the casting probably going to take about six or seven of them so if I put two there one there one there one there I need to space them out and the idea of the lock is it stops the metal spreading and then basically everything is cold metal stitched then so these are all interlaced into each other but the first thing I need to do is just lock the metal so I think I'll start with one in the middle and then one on each end now to do that I've got a special little tool this here and then basically I can just drill through that probably there And then once I've got the once I've got the one hole part in there, use a drill bit with a squared off end like that to give it a nice flat bottom instead of a drilled bottom. Do 
just like just like that and then basically I can use this little pin through my locking tool and into the hole like that And then basically I'm going to tap the centers out of them. I'm going to give these a nice rounded edge on the grinder and then ceramic that in there like that. And then that will stop the center part opening up. And then I'm going to just start stitching this crack back together. So the lock is now installed, I've drilled the first hole ready to fit the first stitching screw in. So basically that's going to go in there in a minute. Yeah, I can't hear the machine now. Hmm? I can't hear the machine. And them screws just really something. Yeah.
So I've started stitching this together now. Uh, I've put a lock in here. I'm starting to stitch along here some more. There's a lock in the middle. I put that in first to stop the head doing that. There's a lock in this end as well. So now the crack is all pinched together. As you can see, I'm starting to stitch along here. Uh, I'm gonna go a bit further and then I'm gonna fit some more locks. Um, so what I'll do actually is I'm gonna go and get my, um, Oh, do you know what? I don't even know what they're called. Engineering divider things. Uh, and try and work out the distance from there to there and there to there. And so they're nice and neat. I don't want them just all random and all over the place. So I'm going to measure it and make sure the locks are exactly in the same place. So <clears throat> what I've done now is I've drilled out ready for the last four locks. Um, I'm going to use this flat ended drill bit now to um, put a nice flat bottom on the bottom of these So we're starting to get there now, we've done all the way along here, all the locks are in, the metal's not moving now because of the locks. Um, there's a couple of sections that I've nearly filled and yeah, I reckon another couple of, uh, maybe an hour and that'll all be stitched back together. Then I need to peel it all over, shape it, pressure test it and we're there then.
Um, that's the Model T. I think it's a Model T. Cylinder head on the pressure tester now. I've repaired it, ground it all back. I've we've put it onto the pressure tester. So what we need to do now is put some load on the cylinder head to clamp off the waterways, and then uh, put some air into the cylinder head, which we're going to do by putting a fitting on this part down here. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. But. So we connect the air to the cylinder head now. Now this is a low pressure water system so we don't need to get it up to 30 psi. Around 10 is more than enough on this. And then what this will show is where I've stitched it, if there's any little leaks. So what I'm going to do is test the whole head as well. I'm going to test inside the combustion chamber just quickly. And then unlock the pressure testing rig, which is done by this bit here. Need to stand there, give it a wiggle at the same time. And then spin the cylinder head over. I'll go the other way because of the air hose. Yeah, straight away I can see a small leak coming from the stitching. So I'm gonna basically go all the way along and it's leaking in quite a few places so I just need to address all of them little blow holes so that's the Ford Ed now all sealing there's 10 psi of pressure going through that now and uh, we've got no no leaks from it Oh my God, tell a lie we have, we've got one. Right, dealing with that. So that's been under pressure now for a good 10 minutes and there's no more, there's no more little bleed holes in it. So what I'm going to do now is take it off the pressure tester, give it a wash and uh, give it a coat of paint. And there we go, that's uh, just over 10 psi. So that's the cylinder head all out of the wash now, it's still warm actually. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, put some primer on it and give it a coat of paint just to make it uh, look nice. But if I zoom in on the, the crack repair, so these bits here are the locks, and then it's basically all the way along here is the stitching, another lock there, a lock there, more stitching, a small lock there, a small lock there, and a small lock there. I've had to put a small lock in because of the radius. But yeah, I'm really happy with that, it looks, uh, looks really good and it's been on the pressure test, we've run it at 12 psi uh, which is a bit more than what I wanted to, to run it at anyway and it held that fine so uh, yeah cut the paint and then that one's good to go so there we are that's the end result on the Ford Model T cylinder head or oh, I believe it to be a Ford Model T anyway um, I mean I'm really pleased with the stitching uh, you can't tell that I've been in there compared to before it was a big crack um so yeah happy with that it holds pressure hopefully the customer will be happy too um that's the end of this video this is going to be a one-off just on this cylinder head i believe because i should imagine it's quite long um so thanks for viewing guys if you could leave the word um forward in the comment section below that would be that would be pretty cool too um also anyone watching that hasn't subscribed yet if you could subscribe and hit the alert bell which is down here somewhere that would be cool too 
Uh, I'll see you on the next video. Take care, everyone, and thanks for watching.